In this series, I will walk you through all the steps for designing a race car suspension. And we'll start by designing the upright pickup points together. Hello everyone, this is Bruno. For this exercise, we're gonna define a case study. And not only I'm gonna walk you through the steps of the design itself, I will even show you how you can document your design. So here we are, this is a documentation page that we created that we're gonna be using throughout this series. The case study will be based on designing a G23 front suspension kinematics. We'll define the pickup points for optimal kinematics performance. Not only that, we also need to communicate with the design team to make sure that the kinematics design fits the overall car design. We'll focus on the design process, not on the specific values or final result that we get. And lastly, we'll follow the kinematics design methodology from the previous episode. If you have not watched it, you should. Besides that, it's important to emphasize that the values used here are only examples. They are not meant to be used in other race cars and they are not recommendations. Besides that, many important parameters are not considered throughout this um, design process since this is just an exercise. So this is a general documentation that we created for this project. We start by the initial consideration. So the design process follows these phases. We define motion ranges. Then we design the outer pickup points, which is going to be the focus of this episode before we move on to designing inner pickup points, actuations, and so on. We also assume that the design team has data from previous cars. We start by quickly defining what motion ranges we want to use for the simulations. We'll start with the heave motion, which is the compression and extension movement of the suspension. For that, we are going to be looking at previous data from this car at three different tracks and understand what is the maximum heave in bump that we get and also the maximum heave in rebound. Under normal conditions of regular curb strikes or low transfer and also more extreme conditions that we can find on the data. From all this information, we define that we want to use a range of plus minus 35 millimeters. Remember that's not only about the range that you see from the data, but also the racing team using your car can be setting the static ride height at different heights, which can increase even further this range that we see over here. Next, we look at the roll motion. Like we dis discussed in the previous video, we have to define what is the suspension roll gradient as well as the maximum lateral acceleration that the car sees at the track. So these are the numbers that the two previous generations of these cars were using, about 0.5 G or 0.5 degrees per G, as well as lateral acceleration up to 2 G. So we can find out that we want to use a range of 1.1 of rho. In order to make sure that we cover all different cases, we use a value higher than that of 1.2. Another interesting item to take into account when defining your motions is to also run the roll motion for different heave levels. This makes sure that the roll movement is working or all the parameters are working well for different heave levels that can be changing due to downforce or due to static ride heights. So we are going to be running the roll simulation at minus 20, zero and plus 20 heave levels. Next, we define pitch motion in the same way. So we understand what we were seeing in previous versions of the car, defining what we want for the new version of the car, and we came up with a range of one degree, which is also simulated at different heave levels, at minus 20, zero, and plus 20. Next, we'll look at the steering range. For now, we're gonna use 180 degrees of steering at the steering wheel. And later on, once we know the steering, the final steering ratio, C factor from the steering rack and so on, this range will be fine-tuned. There are other motions that can be explored in the suspension design, which will not be covered here, but they are corner replay or track replay, and also extreme motion ranges, making sure that we don't have any issues with the mechanisms if the car were to go to very high levels of heave, roll, pitch, and so on. Now we can move on to analyzing specifically the upright, which is the focus of this episode. These are the upright pickup points we'll design together. Wishbone pickup points, as well as tie rod pickup point. These are the targets that we define for each of the parameters mostly connected to the upright. Caster, mechanical trail, kingpin, and so on. We'll not focus too much on the values themselves, but before we move forward, I want to quickly cover what we get from each of them. For that, we created internal documentation, which you also have access about these parameters. All right, so what do we get by defining the upright pickup points? The wishbone pickup points will define a steering axis shown here in green. 
With this, we get a kingpin inclination, caster angle, as well as mechanical trail and scrub radius. If we start by looking at the front view, we have the kingpin angle, which will define, for example, scrub radius, camber variation, ride height variation, and diagonal load transfer with steering, as well as steering effort, among other parameters. Now, speaking specifically about the scrub radius, we have to focus on how much feedback the driver gets on the steering wheel from FX, as well as other parameters that can be seen here. Now, if we look at the side view, we have the caster angle. The caster angle is important to, def or to partially define the mechanical trail. It's a big in it has a big influence on the camber variation with steering, as well as steering effort, ride height variation with steering, and so on. And lastly, the mechanical trail will, will define how much steering feedback the driver gets from lateral forces. Now, if we look more at the steering system, which is related to the toe link that we're also defining the outer pickup point, one of the big influences will be on the Ackermann geometry. Because depending on the angle that you have between the pickup points of the upright, as well as the angle of the tie rod, you're going to change your Ackermann behavior. We'll also take a quick look at the kinematics behavior document we created. So here we're gonna discuss, for example, dynamic camber. Dynamic camber is the camber that you get when you're cornering, which is extremely important, or when you're braking. So in this example, we can see that the outside tire has a camber variation compared to static, and there are many parameters influencing that. One of them in this case is the camber variation with steering, which is completely defined by the upright design. For the camber variation with steering, there is a simplified equation that helps us to understand what is the influence of caster angle and kingpin angle on this parameter. For that, we created a simple tool to help us visualize the results. So here we have two different options in terms of kingpin and caster angle. All right, so in case for the reference or for the comparison option, we zero the caster angle, we can understand quickly what, it, what the influence of the kingpin angle is. So it's how concave this curve is. And we can also do the same exercise for the caster angle. We can see that it dictates the slope or the main slope of this curve. Let's say that we defined what camber variation versus a steering curve we would like to get based on previous experience. And then in this case, we can identify that we wanted to achieve a kingpin angle of 11 degrees as well as a caster angle of 14 degrees. Here we can see that we are trying to achieve in this very specific example for 100 degrees of steering wheel angle, we would like to get 1.5 degrees of more negative camber on the outside tire. So this was our reference, just as an example. So the last kinematic behavior that we have to mention is about toe behavior and bump steer. This will be dictated also by the direction or orientation of the tie link, but we're gonna focus more on this parameter in the next episode when we design the inboard pickup points. So this was just a brief overview of each kinematic parameter. You can find a lot more in our seminars. Right, so now that we have the theory out of the way, we can go to optimum kinematics and start designing our suspension system. So this is the baseline suspension that we created. So you can do this based on previous versions of the car or based on experience. And then we're going to be trying to fine tune the outboard pickup points to get to the per parameters that we want. Before we make any changes, we're going to create a V2 of the suspension. It is very important that we keep track of each version of the suspension, each iteration. All right, so now that we are in V2, let's check the parameters that we have here and compare them with the targets that we have. We'll start by looking at the kingpin angle. So we defined a target of 11 degrees. What we have currently is 8.6. I'll show you a very time consuming process, as I explained in the previous episode, of doing it manually. Later on in the video, I'll show you a better approach of doing that. So let's try to manually change these pickup points. At least it's important that we understand what we should be doing with these pickup points in order to achieve the parameters that we would like to get. So in this case, I have to increase the kingpin inclination. So let's work on the left side and obviously make it symmetrical. And to increase the kingpin angle, I'll send this pickup point a little bit inboard. So let's change the Y coordinate by 20 millimeters. And we see that it, yeah, we got 12 degrees, which is a little higher than we would like to get. So let's go back a little bit. And yeah, there you go, 11. Obviously we want to be a lot more accurate than this, but for this first iteration that we're doing manually, 
I'll be fine with 11.3 instead of 11. Now, connected to that, as we saw in the theory part, we also have to look at the scrub radius. The scrub radius is minus 7, meaning that the steering axis is crossing the contact patch out on the outside part of the tire. What we would like to have, and we defined for this design, a value of 10 positive, which should be to the inside. In order to achieve that, either I have to send this pickup point to the inside or this one to the outside. The problem is that if we change only one of them, then we get back to also getting our kingpin angle wrong. So let's try to create an offset and shift these two pickup points at the same time. So we have to send both of them inboard to increase the scrub radius on the positive direction while keeping the kingpin inclination the same. So let's work first with about 17 millimeters to the inside. Now we can see that the scrub radius got to five millimeters. So yeah, we're still missing a little bit and we can run another round here. So we do another five millimeters for both pickup points. Keeping the kingpin inclination the same while adjusting the scrub radius to our target value of 10 millimeters. All right, so this was the front view. Thinking about the side view and we can do that together. We have to think about the caster angle as well as the mechanical trail. So here we have a caster angle of 10 while our target was 14. So let's adjust the top pickup point and we have to send it a little reward to increase the caster angle. So let's do five millimeters reward and we got a new value of 11. So we need more than that. Do another 20 millimeters. Probably we're gonna go a little over and then we go back. Right, let's say that we're happy with this, even though we should be more accurate and get you down to 14. Now we look at mechanical trail. So mechanical trail is at 27, while we defined that we wanted a mechanical trail of 40 millimeters for this GT3 car. It is very similar to the Kingpin and Scrub Radius discussion. We need to shift these two pickup points at the same time so that we keep the caster angle while we adjust the mechanical trail. So let's do that together. We need to send both pickup points a little forward. So let's do 15 millimeters forward here and 15 millimeters forward for the bottom pickup point as well. All right, so we have a mechanical trail close to the target of 40 millimeters that we defined. Now we have to go back to the kingpin inclination and also scrub radius. And yeah, let's say that we, we got a reasonably good um, result for a manual approach. If we run more iterations, we can get even closer to the parameters that we want. Now that we changed the wishbone pickup points will first document the changes that we made before we go to V3 and discuss about steering system. Back to our documentation, we can create a version control where we're gonna explain each change that was made. This is extremely important during the design process because you can keep track of the changes you made and also other team members can check what was changed from one version to the other. Remember that when you are designing your suspension, you're going to have many, many versions. For this version control, we're going to keep an Excel file with the pickup points so that other people on the team can check each of the versions. This could be done with a shared Excel file as well. And we're going to explain what changes were made. And also we changed the top wishbone outer pickup point as well as the bottom wishbone outer pickup point. And for the parameters we were trying to change, we focused on the caster, mechanical trail, kingpin inclination, and scrub radius. We also are going to add that this was a manual iteration to be fine-tuned with optimization later on. Now we'll create a V3 inside Optimum Kinematics, and we are going to play with the tie rod pickup point. So here there are different parameters that we should be looking at. We're going to be defining at least partially the bump steer with this pickup point, as well as Ackermann and steering ratio. For the steering ratio, we will assume that later on we can change the C factor or the ratio of the steering rack to get to the final effective steering ratio we would like to see on the steering system. 
In order to change bump steer and Ackermann, we have to change this pickup point. In order to minimize bump steer, we're assuming in this case that we want to minimize bump steer, we have to have the tie rod pointing more toward the instant center of the front view, which can also be displayed inside Optimum Kinematics. And now we have it being displayed here. So if we get this tie rod a little bit more aligned with this instant center, it's one way of minimizing the bump steer. However, we're not going to really focus on this parameter in this episode. When we design the inboard pickup points, we're going to be more focused on that. Another very important parameter to be defined here, as we discussed previously, is the Ackermann. So depending on the angle between these two pickup points on the upright, as well as the angle of the steering rack with the upright, we're going to be changing our Ackermann. So with this, we can see what Ackermann geometry we currently have. So here we're going to be plotting the Ackermann angle, which is the difference between the outside and inside tire. So we can see that in this case, for V2, we have for the complete range of motion, 180 degrees. We have the outside tire steering 0.6 degree more than the inside tire, meaning that we have anti-Ackermann geometry currently. So now let's say that we want to make this less anti-Ackermann. We are trying to get to parallel steering. I'm not going to focus too much on the Ackermann geometry here. But if I move this point a little bit more to the outside, let's say by 15 millimeters, I am changing the angle. And as we saw, this angle will influence the Ackermann geometry. I run a new simulation with the current V3. And I can now compare the previous results with V3. And yes, now we can see that we got a lot closer to parallel steering. It is not perfect, but it is good enough for this manual iteration. All right, so let's say that we're happy enough about V3. Let's document this version and let's submit it to the rest of the design team so that they can verify if we have any issues with the current version. All right, so in V3, we changed the tie rod outer pick a point and our focus was on Ackermann geometry. A few other comments, we still have to check and adjust steering ratio as well as bump steer. So V3 was submitted to the design team and now we're going to wait for feedback to see if there were interferences with other systems or any conflicts that needs to get solved at this stage. And this was the feedback that we got from the design team. So they found basically two conflicts. The first one is that the lower control arm is too much to the outside and it, it is hitting the brake disc. So if we go, go back to our suspension, this is what's going on. So this outboard point of the lower wishbone is too close to the brake discs here. So it needs to be sent a little bit more to the inside. And they say that it needs to be at least eight millimeters more to the inside. And the second conflict they found is that the tie rod attachment at the upright is too close to the wheel center. So this pick a point over here is too close to the wheel center. Maybe they don't have enough space for the design of the upright or they have conflicts with um, brake calipers, brake ducts and so on. So it needs to be sent forward by at least 40 millimeters. So now we're gonna create a V4 where we're gonna try to adjust the conflicts found while at the same time trying to keep the target parameters as close to the defined values as possible. In this next iteration, where we have the conflicts, while at the same time trying to get you the target values, instead of doing it manually, which would be very tricky, we're gonna use an optimization. This makes sure that we find the best compromise between all different parameters given the constraints set by the design team. So in Optimum Kinematics, we have the optimization module. I have already created the optimization simulations. Let me walk you through it. So first we define objectives. What do we want to accomplish for our kinematic parameters? Here we can select any output from Optimum Kinematics. In this specific case, I selected a few. So for a heave movement, we are focusing on toe angle because we want to minimize bump steer. So as the suspension is compressed, and as you can see, the simulation goes from zero to 100%, I want to keep my toe angle as close as possible to zero. This is my target. Then I have my kingpin incl inclination, caster angle, scrub radius, and mechanical trail. Besides that, we also look at a steering motion. 
In this case, we're trying to make sure that the Ackermann angle is as close as we can to zero, indicating parallel steering, as you steer from one side to the other, so as this simulation goes from zero to 100%. In this case, you can see that we're we are focusing on the specific parameters, so caster angle, kingpin inclination, and so on. There is a different approach. Instead of focusing on the parameters themselves, we can focus on the expected behavior. So I also have this other version that instead of defining a caster and kingpin inclination, I am defining for a steering movement what camber variation I want to see. So here we have, as we steer the steering wheel, what is the camber variation curve that we would like to get? In this case, I'll let the optimization find what caster and kingpin angles I want in order to achieve all these different parameters, including mechanical trails, scrub radius, and so on. After defining the objectives that we want to accomplish with the simulation, we also have to define the design space. So what pickup points can the optimizer be playing with and with what range? Now we're ready to run this optimization. Let's see what it looks like. Once we start it, we can see that for each generation, the optimizer finds a different best suspension. On the left side, you can see the new pickup point that the optimizer found, or we can also display the current behavior for each iteration. So let's say that we want to have a look at camber angle with steering. So in green, we have the objective, and in blue, we have the optimi optimized value. So we can see that the optimizer, after just a few seconds, already found a good combination of pickup points to get to the parameters that we want. So after we ran about 200 generations, we are very happy with the results because we're following pretty much everything that we wanted. So mechanical trail static is what we wanted, even though it has some variation. Scrub radios as well. Bump steer is really minimized. Ackerman angle, it's basically parallel steering, as we can see here in blue. And the camber variation with steering, it's exactly what we were asking for. So we can stop the simulation and we pick the last suspension and we save it. So we add it to the project and it's going to be our front V4. We should always double check that the values that we got make sense and that we can fit it considering the other components of the vehicle. If you're not happy with any of the pickup points, let's say that anything was too far from what you would expect, you can fine tune the range for the optimization algorithm. Let's say that in this case, we're happy with the suspension that we got. Let's review all of the parameters that we were looking at as our targets when we were defining the, pick the initial pickup points. If we look, for example, at caster angle, it is exactly the 14 degrees that we were um, defining or that we have defined previously. Kingpin inclination, we defined 11, but now we see 14. Why that happens? Well, the first reason is because we were not asking the optimization to find the specific kingpin inclination anymore. We were asking for a camber variation with steering. But also, when we have more constraints coming from the design team, we cannot find all of the parameters at the same time anymore. We need to compromise. So the optimizer found a compromise for us that it changed the kingpin target to 14, or it found a value of 14 that helps us at least to accomplish the other objectives. So you can see that we have a scrub radius of 11, which is very close to what we were targeting as 10. And you can see that the mechanical trail is also the 40 millimeters we were expecting. Of course, there are a few other considerations that we should be looking at right now. So with this new kingpin inclination or the new pickup points in general, what is the load or the diagonal load transfer with steering? What is the right height variation? What is the steering effort? What is the spindle distance? Everything needs to be checked by us, the designers. In this case, we'll assume that we are pretty happy with the results and now we can submit a new V4, which both gets to the target parameters and kinematic behavior that we defined, as well as it follows the constraints defined by the design team. With this, we can document V4 and we can see what is the feedback from the design team. And with their feedback, we can conclude that we successfully finished the upright pickup points for iteration number one of the process. So I just walked you through all the steps for designing the pickup points for the upright and how to create the documentation for the design process as well. Don't forget that in the video description, you will have access to all the notebooks provided here in this episode. And in the next one, we'll be designing the inboard pickup points. If you like this content, you might be interested in our seminars. We have our Applied Vehicle Dynamics seminars, where we teach 
everything about kinematics and vehicle dynamics in a lot more details than what we did here in this episode. Besides that, we also have our performance engineering seminar, where through many guided exercises on data analysis and performance engineering, we understand how to exploit a car design at 100% of its performance. You can find our seminar calendar in the video description. Besides that, Optimum G offers the following services. We offer vehicle dynamics consulting, where for example, we could be helping you to design the kinematics of your car. We also offer performance engineering, where you could have one of our engineers go into the racetrack with you. And lastly, we offer simulation software, including Optimum Kinematics for Kinematics, as well as vehicle dynamics and tire modeling software. You can find more about that on our website. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section so that I can get back to you. And I'll see you in the next one.